SBM128 asked, I understand the difference between functions and commands, but I'm still kind of unclear on parameters. Not sure if I can or should use them to send or receive data. When the proper time to use them might be, as opposed to just using a set value within a simple command to find to retrieve data and so on. And I think that's an excellent question. I can see why you may not understand why we should ever use parameters. And by the end of this video, you are going to hopefully not only understand why we need them, but also hopefully you'll start using them all the time. Now, before we begin, I have a little announcement. I just launched Elite Botters, so the website is now live. And so is our first course. It's called UBot Studio Mastering the Fundamentals. This course is designed to get you from wherever you are right now to a solid understanding of the fundamentals. And we have some super cool features like fun quizzes, video search, and more. So be sure to check it out. There's a link in the description below. Now, what exactly is a parameter and why should you care? In this context, we are talking about parameters which can be defined when you create a custom command or function. To do that, you can just drag out the define command and then you will see a section for parameters. So I'm going to drag out this define command and down here is a section for the parameters. There's a plus sign where you can add parameters and a minus sign where you can remove parameters. You will notice that the parameters have a purple background. This means that it's a variable input field. So whatever name you put here will turn into a new variable. So I'm just going to name this my command and I'll name this parameter value one, hit OK. And we can see that value one is now a new variable in the debugger. Now it should be noted that this variable is a local variable. And that means that only things inside of the command or function you are making can see it. So that means you won't see its value in the debugger. Let me show you what I mean. So I can call my command and set this value one by simply typing my command in the search box and then entering a value, and that's gonna set this variable. So I'm gonna set my value. I'm gonna press run, open the debugger, and as we can see, value one is here, but there's no value for it. There's no value that's been set over here. We should see my value, however we don't. And if I press run, you can see that it's not showing up in the debugger. The reason is because it's local. And what that means is that only things inside of this define can see it. So if I, if I used a command here, such as an alert, and then use this value one, this alert can see it. So if I run this, you can see that it alerts my value. However, if we open the debugger again, again, you will not see this. So because the parameters are local, I like to preface it with an underscore. This tells me that it's a local variable, and when I'm looking in the debugger, I won't expect to see values for local variables. So I can take this value one, put an underscore there, and I can now get rid of this. And when I'm looking in the debugger, when I see a variable with an underscore like that, I know that it's local, and I'm not expecting to see a, var a value over here. So now that you have a rough idea of what a parameter is, let's talk about why you would want to use one over just a normal set command. And the reason is because it makes the custom commander function independent. So that is to say that it doesn't need to rely on some outside source of information. Instead, it can take in information and then use it in some way. Now, that probably won't make too much sense if you're new to U-botting or programming in general, but don't worry, this is one of those things that's better to show rather than tell. So with that in mind, let's go over some examples. Let's create a custom function which adds some bank account, balances, and returns the result. So I'm just gonna paste in some code here. And we have two accounts here, checking account with a value of 500 and savings account with a value of 200. We then created a custom function called add. And we called this in the combined balances. And if I click on this, you can see it doesn't expand. And we'll get to that in a minute. If I click on this add, which is just the normal UBOT add function, by the way, I just happen to name it the same. What we're doing in this custom add function is we're returning the value of the checking account plus the savings account. 
And when we call that and combine balances, it goes to this function, which then returns this plus this. And so we get that as a new value. So if I open the debugger and press run, we can see that our checking account, of course, gets set to 500. Our saving account gets set to 200. And of course, the combined 500 plus 200 is 700. Now, in this example, we are not using parameters. However, as you can see, when we run the program, it works. So this isn't making a great case as to why we should use parameters, but let's see what happens when we want to introduce two new account types. In this example, let's just say the person has money invested in cryptocurrencies as well as a stock portfolio, and we want to get a combined total of those extra accounts as well. So let's go ahead and add two new variables, one for crypto. So we'll say crypto account, and we'll say that there's $50 in there, and then we'll have a stock portfolio. So we'll say stock account, and let's say there's $100 in there. Well, right now, our custom function only adds together the balances of checking and savings accounts because it is dependent on those variables. In order to add more accounts, like this crypto and the stock account, we would have to go in and either maybe edit this function or make another function, or we would have to change the checking account and saving account variables. But of course, we want to use a crypto and a stock account. We don't want to use a checking and savings account, so that doesn't really make sense. So instead of doing all that extra work, we can actually just use this same function. But now we can use parameters to make it more independent and not have to rely on specific variables being set before. So let's go ahead and change our function to now accept parameters so you can see the difference. So right now, I'm just gonna get rid of these for a second so we don't see them. And I just wanna focus on what we had before and I wanna update it now to use parameters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now use two parameters and I wanna make these fairly generic. In this case, I just wanna have value one. And remember, because it's essentially a local, a local variable, I'm prefacing this with an underscore so that I know when I look in the debugger not to expect to see a value for this. And now let's use value two. Okay, we have our parameters set here. Now we need to change how the function actually works. So in this case, it's pretty easy. We can just get rid of these and use value one and value two. Okay. So now that we've updated our function here, we wanna come back into our combined balances and change it because when I double click on add, nothing happens. So I'm gonna to have to go in and edit this and you can come over here to custom functions or search for it up here, either way. And when I drag it in now, you can see that it's expandable. So for our first value, we can add in our checking account for a second, we can add in our savings account. And now we can clear the variables and press run. And as you can see, we have our checking account and our savings account, which have been set and our combined balances are the sum of those two accounts added together. So one more time, just in case you're not 100% on what's going on here, we set two parameters, which are essentially local variables. So these are gonna store the information that's passed into them. In the first parameter, value one here, we're allowed to set it up here when we use the add function, all right, our custom function. Or this can work with commands as well, by the way. So either one. We pass in our checking account. So essentially we're saying 500 in this first uh, value here. Then in our second value, we pass in the savings account, which essentially is 200. And so this parameter value one is 500, this parameter value two is 200. We're then returning the sum of those. So 500 plus 200 and getting it back into this variable. And that's why it says 700. So now that we have this new add function, which has these parameters, we can now go ahead and use it for two new account types. Because it's not dependent on this checking account and the savings account up here, which are the, the uh, variables we set up there, now it can use any two numbers that we pass into it. So let's go ahead and try it with these extra accounts. So I'm going to set another variable here, and I'm going to say, say combined extra accounts. 
and we can find our add function up here. And now we can put the crypto account in here and the stock account in here. Okay, and now when we run this again, we can see now that our crypto account, which is $50, and our stock account, which is 100, get added when we use that function and we get 150, which of course is correct. As you can see, now that we are using parameters, we can use this function whenever we need to add two things together. With that in mind, we can actually take this one step further and also add up the combined balances and the combined extra balances to get a total of all the accounts together, all by using the same function. So let's go ahead and set one more variable to say total. And we can use our add function again, or we could just drag it from over here. And we can say the combined balances and the combined extra account. I spelled that, I meant to say balances, but you get the idea. And now when we run this, it's gonna add everything up. So our combined balances was 700 and our combined extra accounts, which showed a red balances, but that's okay, this is 150. And now we get a total so we get 850 because it added those two together. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking, which is why can't I just use the same two variables and set them before using the function? So what you probably are thinking is why can't I just set a value one outside of here, right? And then set a value two, you know, and so on, and then use those instead. And instead of using these parameters, and the reason is because this will, it will not work in a multi-threaded environment that way. You can't set global variables from several threads at the same time and then send them through a function like this because your data is gonna get corrupted. So while this may technically work in a single threaded environment, like you could do it that way, it's just bad practice. So as you can see, parameters can be really powerful. We took a function which was not using parameters and relied on variables being set before. This was only able to add two specific variables together. And then we added parameters so that now it can add any two values. Doing this allowed us to use the function three times in the same program. If you liked the video, be sure to tell me in the comments below. And be sure to check out our new course, UBOT Studio Mastering the Fundamentals. The link is in the description below. That's going to do it for this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.